you know, I think Ethereum is a security. I think it's pretty obvious it's a security. It was issued via an ICO. There's a management team. Uh, there's a pre-mine. There, uh, there's a hard fork. There's multi, you know, there, there's continual hard forks. There's a difficulty bomb that keeps getting pushed back. The difficulty bomb is going to wipe out the entire ETH mining industry. It's going to it, it obliterate it, murder it. Okay. The fact that somebody is able to murder an entire industry and then they keep changing their mind every six months about whether to do it or not do it is indicia that it's a security and not a commodity. Michael Saylor, the CEO and co founder of business intelligence and analytics for MicroStrategy, recently named Ether, the native token of the Ethereum blockchain network, as a security and not a commodity. In a recent interview with Allcoin Daily, Saylor describes Ethereum as an obvious security since the team of developers can decide to make changes to the network without the approval of participants. He adds that anything that can be described as a commodity in the crypto space will have similar qualities to gold, meaning no team of developers come decision makers and no hard forks or upgrades that can change the way the network behaves. Since Ethereum has all these qualities, Michael Saylor is convinced that the second largest cryptocurrency network is a security, even though Ether and Bitcoin have been described as commodities by the heads of certain U.S. regulatory agencies and lawmakers. The newly introduced bipartisan bill from Senators Cynthia Lummies and Kirsten Gillibrand classifies Ethereum as a security. Figure aheads from the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, and the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, CFTC, have also made similar statements in the past. Does Saylor disagree solely because he's a Bitcoin maximalist or because there is indeed a need to examine Ethereum as a security and not a commodity? Please watch Saylor's interview and let us know your opinions about Ethereum's status and Saylor's interview in the comment section below. Also, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. We are still trying to get to 150,000 subscribers and we really appreciate all the help we can get to achieve that milestone. Thanks and enjoy. For it to be a commodity, there can't be an issuer and the truth is you can't really make decisions. I mean, one of the, one of the fundamental insights in the crypto industry is, is the fact that you can change it is what makes it a security. So if you look at most of these cryptos where they have hard fork after hard fork after hard fork, the problem with a hard fork is that changing the protocol means that some development team is making a decision. And, and if you can change the protocol in a material way, you can change the monetary protocol, right? A hard fork can change the issuance pattern or can change the value of something. And so that makes an investment contract under, under securities law. And that means it passes the Howey test. So what you want is, is a completely decentralized protocol where nobody can change it even if they wanted to change it. So fundamentally, the problem with Ethereum is they keep changing it, right? Uh, from a securities law point of view, right? And there's a team of people that make recommendations. And, and if you want to establish yourself as a digital commodity, you're trying to create something like gold in cyberspace. So for example, no gold miners in the world could change the, the physical characteristics of gold. If a government passed a law, I mean, they wouldn't send an email saying, oh, gold is now steel or steel is now aluminum, right? You can't, if you can change the characteristics of it, right, then it's not a commodity, it's a security. And securities have a place in the world, but they need to be sold to the general public pursuant to a disclosure, full and fair disclosure. You want to take a company public, you have to disclose who owns the, the, the company, what are the risk factors? And that way people can make a decision. The problems I see right now, it's like, you know, you've still got the ETH locked up and will the merge take place? Will it not take place? And then after it takes place, then the question is, how long is your ETH locked up? And then what's the, what, is there a staking reward? And what is that? And if, it, if there is a staking reward, it's probably a security. The head of the SEC has said on six different occasions in his interview, Saylor also speaks about whether or not other cryptocurrency networks are truly decentralized. He argues that the presence of decision makers in other blockchain networks dilutes decentralization and the very core of the cryptocurrency space. In the blockchain industry, decentralization refers to the transfer of control and decision making from a centralized entity, such as an individual, group, or organization, to a distributed network. This helps to reduce or completely eliminate the level of trust that participants must place in other people. 
With true decentralization, the centralized authority will have as much control over the functionality of the network as other participants. This usually means they would need the permission of a majority of participants to effect changes. As Saylor explains in his interview, not many blockchain networks really follow these principles. If you look at the Solana thing, Solend last two weeks ago, the fact that you can vote on something is, is proof that it's a security. For example, my company votes on things. Shareholders vote on things. When you take a shareholder vote, it doesn't make you gold, right? There's no way that the gold owners or the gold miners could take a vote and convert gold into aluminum, you see? And if I owned a bunch of lumber, I couldn't take a vote and turn the lumber into steel, right? So ultimately, the challenge with these things is the ability to do anything. If it's truly decentralized, then you have to release lease the protocol into the world and not change it, not even, not even contemplate changing it. In fact, you know, that one of the big problems with all these proof of stake networks is in order to get them to work, they have to keep doing hard fork after hard fork. And the reason they're doing it is because they're, they're putting the security into the software instead of into the hardware or into the physics. If you're relying on the physics of, of the network with proof of work, then you don't have to keep upgrading the software. If you keep upgrading the software, then, then someone's got to write the software. And when you write the software, you end up with this exploding complexity. And then you have to, you know, you have to keep changing it. And so this, this pursuit of functionality and performance via continual upgrade, that's, that makes you a software company. Is Ethereum a security or commodity? Last month, Senator Gillibrand said that both the SEC and CFTC heads agree that Bitcoin and Ether are commodities. But during a CNBC interview, Gary Gensler, the chairperson of the SEC, seemed very reluctant to describe Ether as a commodity. Gensler noted that only certain cryptocurrencies are commodities while others are securities. However, he refused to mention any other except for Bitcoin. According to Gillibrand and Lummies, a digital asset can either be a commodity, security, or an ancillary asset, which Lummies explained could include non-fungible tokens or digital assets that are not stores of value or means of payment. On the other hand, securities would be defined using the Howey test, which stipulates three criteria for establishing assets that are securities. There must be the investment of money in a common enterprise and with reasonable expectations of profits to be derived from the efforts of others. Tokens that confer voting rights, dividend payments, or profit slash revenue share on their holders will be considered securities. If you're like Bitcoin and creating a proof of work or a proof of stake type of token, you may well be a commodity, Gillibrand stated during an interview. Bitcoin and Ether would be certainly commodities, and that's agreed upon by Chairman Gensler, as well as the chairman of the CFTC, she added. As he has proved in the CNBC interview, Gensler might not be fully convinced that Ethereum is a commodity and Gensler's is an opinion that really matters. Just as Saylor has argued that Ethereum is a security, any other person can argue otherwise with sufficient proof that Ethereum is a commodity. But if the SEC or any other regulator finds that the crypto asset is a security, then that would create a lot of confusion and chaos. What do you think about Michael Saylor's interview? Is Ethereum a security like Bitcoin or just another cryptocurrency that can be regulated away by the SEC? Please let us know what you think in the comment section below and don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks for watching.